<laughs> so yeah, let's not have that happen. Uh, let's move on. We have round two coming up. Let's move on. Let's talk about uh, UFC Brasilia, which is this weekend. Now, we have an important main event where we have Kevin Lee and uh, Charles Oliveira fighting lightweight division. And this is an important fight for both men. On one side, you have Lee, who is trying to show he belongs among the elite. He wants to stay in that group and show that he is one of the best at whether it be 155 or 170. And then on the other side, you have Charles Oliveira, who's on a six-fight win streak. A lot of people don't even realize that, but some of the names he's defeated during this win streak aren't the strongest. So you have two guys who are surging, and you have very limited spaces of relevancy at lightweight. Well, we're going to talk about uh, the fight between Dustin Poirier and Dan Hooker that was just booked for May coming up this year. Kevin Lee is sitting in the top five. Charles Oliveira, I think, is at number 10. Let's talk about this stylistically first. Who do you see winning this fight and, and why? Um, I'm going to say, I mean, I probably shouldn't say this because Kevin Lee tends to do just the most stupidest thing in the fight. But I'm going I'm to have to say Kevin Lee. Um, I think he's, I don't know that he's a better athlete, but I think he's a more structured fighter. I think he, he has more potential moving forward. It's just a matter of, applying his skill set and his abilities in the in the right manner. That's been the biggest issue with him. A lot of fights he won just being a better guy against lower tier fighters. And then when he fought the better guy the better guys, his lack of composure, his lack of variety, his lack of discipline ended up costing him fights. Uh training with Frost the Hobby, he's around other he's around a guy who's who's used to athleticism. And so now instead of leaning on his athleticism, he's starting to develop a structured attack, and he's using whatever athleticism he has to maximize the effects of those skill sets instead of just thinking he's going to bully someone or out-wrestle somebody. Because the, quite frankly, Kevin Lee's never been one of the best athletes in 155. The, his advantage is he's, he's a big 155-er, not that he's a super athletic 155-er. And secondly, Kevin Lee's, Kevin Lee's never been a good enough athlete to mask the fact that he's not great, hugely durable, and he's not super technical. So in... I'm, I'm hoping that fighting with, with working with Zahabi has just made him a little bit more structured and a little bit more cleaner. And that's what I'm expecting against him. I don't think Oliveira's, Oliveira, Lee's not very durable. Oliveira, to me, is very fragile. You just have to get him in certain spots and punish him. He's been stopped a lot. He's been physically bullied a lot. He's been worked over to decisions a lot. The, the biggest advantage he has is he's such a dynamic finisher and he's so dynamic in spots. He can explode with a big series of strikes. He can explode and find a submission. But my, my, my take on him is if you can consistently attack him, being defensively responsibly, uh, responsible and offensively deliberate, you can outwork him and you can pick him apart and you can break him down. Because he looks for you to over-pursue and he looks for you to get lazy and he looks for you to get sloppy. And then he finds the hole he needs to get that submission, get that takedown, get that big shot in. It's all in bursts. He doesn't consistently fight from one moment of the round to the end. He finds these spots, these lulls in the action where he takes over and wins. He essentially wins a fight in 30 seconds. He was losing a fight for four minutes and 30 seconds, and then that 30-second, 15-second moment, he snatches something, he reverses something, unloads, and then, then, it's, then it's done. But if you can stay on him and kind of navigate his pressure and kind of push him back, he tends not to have very much except for heart and a willingness to fire, willingness to fight back which, if you're disciplined, just is going to get him hurt. So who um, who is the victory more valuable for on Saturday? Is it for Lee, who's just trying? Lee talks a lot, so people are looking for reasons to, to detract from him and say that he's not an elite-level fighter. And then on the other side, you have Oliveira, who's rather, I don't want to say reserved, but he's just not as prominent of a name, even though he's been on a pretty good, solid run. I mean, he's been doing well. He just struggles against the best of the best. Who is looking for a fight? or excuse me, who's looking for a victory more. Uh, who has more to win and more to gain um, coming out of Saturday? Well, uh, I think Oliveira has more to gain. I, I want to say it's even, but I think Oliveira, because a lot of people have tagged Kevin Lee as a potential elite guy. Kevin Lee's actually gotten to a title fight. Even though it was an interim title fight, he's gotten to a title fight. Kevin Lee's actually been able to hold his own with the best of the best. When he fought Tony Ferguson, it was a competitive fight, you know, it wasn't like just a one-sided, it wasn't a one-sided loss. He wasn't clearly dominated. When you see, 
when you've seen um, Charles Oliveira step up to the best guy he's faced, he's gotten beat. He's gotten handled pretty handily. He's been dominated. He's been beaten up. He he's essentially been just worked over against Frank Yeager, Cub Swanson, Anthony Pettis, Donald Cerrone. They weren't really competitive fights. They had moments of danger, and then he was basically eliminated. And that's it, – it kind of put a hard cap on how people see him. So if he wins this fight, as flawed a fighter as Lee has been strategically and technically, it's still over a guy who's considered one of the, one of the better athletes and a guy who's be, been successive, successful ex, in an extensive manner at the division. Even though Lee's not a really good name, big name and Lee's not truly elite, it would show a step forward for um, Oliveira. But the fact of the matter is neither one of these guys is considered right now a potential champion or a real potential contender. So either one either wins, it changes the narrative a little bit because it, it's going to require them to show some growth from who they've been historically against the best level of competition. But it doesn't put anybody in that elite, elite aspect. Like right now, maybe they're high third-tier fighters. Whoever wins this fight becomes a low or middle middle tier middle level second tier fighter it doesn't instantly push you into um, elite status because neither one of these guys has routinely beaten guys who were close to being elite if you look at um charlo Oliveira's wins who, who who are these guys he's beaten tamir jim miller clay guida not exactly a murderer's row jared gordon good fighter good talent but not considered elite who's kevin lee been losing he lost to ally quinta that's not elite the guys he beat up to Al Iquin and Michael Kaseya, that's not elite either. So both these guys are essentially third-tier fighters trying to see if they can take the step to becoming second-tier fighters and hopefully put themselves in a position where they're another two fights away from possibly becoming elite contenders. So based off of that alone, uh, who do you think wins on Saturday? I'll go with Kevin. Definitely. I mean, it's going to require him to be the best version of himself, but I really feel that now he's he's learning to fight. Like, he's learning. He knows he, he could fight. He's learning how to fight. A lot of his fights that were lost were just, just lack of strategic awareness and technical growth. Instead of throwing, I think now he's starting to put things together, like literally put things together. Instead of just wrestling, I can wrestle and grapple. I can strike to wrestle. I can grapple and strike. I think he, he's learning, learning a flow. I think he, he's learning pacing. And I think he's learning how to apply pressure without leaning on his physicality and actually using his mind and his skills, which will keep him from being exposed. I, as good as Charles Oliveira has, has gotten recently, and as many wins he's been, he hasn't faced anybody who could, who could compete with him really athletically or a guy who could push back when he tries to impose his will or he tries to explode in these big moments. He could explode in a big moment, get, catch a sub, finish Kevin Lee, but I think Kevin Lee has shown that against a better caliber of opponent that he can work through some adversity. And you have to maintain a certain amount of pressure and a certain amount of a certain pace to beat Kevin Lee. I don't think Charles Oliveira can fight at a certain pace through three, three rounds, much less five rounds. And I don't think exploding in spots is going to be enough to get, to get it done versus Kevin Lee. I think Kevin Lee's fought and beat better guys than Charles Oliveira. I think, once again, Charles Oliveira is going to hit his glass ceiling when he faces a guy with comparable athleticism and comparable skill set. Okay, awesome there, sir. So I want to talk about the fight that I'm probably most excited for and the fight that I was ridiculously excited when I saw it announced. We have Gilbert Burns fight, fighting against um, Damian Maya. We have an ADCC champion fighting against a bronze medalist uh, competitor as well. This is, a, this is a grappler's paradise right here for me. And uh, I am elated to watch this fight for a number of reasons just because i think these two guys are probably two of the two of the best notice i'm not saying the two best but two of the best grapplers in mma today so let's talk about this fight here man is this fight going to turn into a strikers battle or are we going to see them playing on on the ground in theory i mean you know the routine it is with mixed martial arts you have two high level strike grapplers it turns into a striking match you have two high level grab strikers at some point, it, it turns into some kind of a sloppy shoot boxing wrestling match. So, in theory, if this goes to trend, it should be a striker's battle. If I'm Gilbert Burns, I feel I'm a better offensive striker than Maya. I feel like I'm younger, physically more durable, and I'm much more athletic and explosive. I don't even know why I try to test Maya in, 
in the area that he's strongest in. I, I get, I get he's a world class grappler too. I get driving home the point because, like Michael Irvin says, you you attack a man's weaknesses to beat him. You attack his strengths to break him. And out grappling, Damian Maya would be a huge feather in his cap. But struggling with a 40-year-old Damian Maya isn't a good look for anybody. And somehow allowing Damian Maya to walk you down and submit you is even a worse look. Burns needs a big, big um, highlight, stamp it win. This is his chance to do it. And him doing anything except fighting a disciplined, control fight on the feet and outclassing Maya is basically a malpractice as a fighter. You don't, you, you don't attack people where they're strong at. Unless you're trying to prove a point. And this is a professional sport. This isn't personal. We don't need to prove points. We need to get wins, move the rankings, and get paid. So while I while I too would enjoy a grappling match, I can't imagine Gilbert Burns is foolish enough to just wantonly engage in it. Especially early when Maya's fresh. Now after he beats him up a little bit on the feet, we might have something. But right away, while Maya's fresh, I mean nobody wants a fresh Maya on the ground. I don't care if you're world class. Just because you're world class, as you know, when you, you're world class or a high level guy and you're facing another high level guy, it's 50 50 either way because that guy's high level too. You don't have the room for error. You can't make the mistakes you make with a, with a lower level guy. So is Burns willing to take those chances where he could be finished or punished for any mistake he makes in a way that he wouldn't be versus most guys? I, I hope not. I would expect better from him. Is this fight a. I don't want to say important fight in the welterweight division. Let's look and see where these two individuals are ranked real quick before I finish my question. Because, um, you know, Damian Maia is a multiple-time title challenger in, in, at welterweight and at 185. He's sitting at number five. Gilbert Burns is sitting at number 10. Uh, so this is kind of like what's going on with the lightweight fight that's main eventing this contest or this event. Because, let's see, where... Um, Let's see, Kevin Lee sitting at kinda, but, but we, yeah, it, 13. You, you are right. Um, the thing is, the lightweight, they have a lot of guys gunning. They have a lot of fresh blood. Gil, this is Gilbert Burns' chance to really – he beats Damian Maya. I, I'd essentially say, have to say he's elite. There's a lot of guys who would be considered better than him, but they haven't fought very often. This is Burns' chance to really separate himself and insert himself into uh, the names at the division. Maya's only lost – Maya's lost two, two champions. Uh, one title cha- one, two champions and one title challenger in the past few years. Everybody else he's been mopping the floor with. So you beat him, beating him still means something because only the best of the best have beaten him and done so decisively. So Burns beats him. He's essentially put himself in the, in the, in the sweepstakes for a potential title fight. I guess if you really think, want to be crazy about it, he might have put himself in the sweepstakes for a potential Conor McGregor fight. Possibly. I doubt it, but possibly. Um, yeah, the, definitely the sta- the, the, the stakes aren't that high at um at the lightweight fight. Neither one of those guys is – they're like two fights out from a title shot, two or three. If he beats Maya, he really might be in position to angle for a title shot or at least be in talks. He'll at least be in the discussion. Thank you there, sir. Um, let's talk about – is there anything else on this card that really stands out? to you um i looked at it and these two fights are probably what what stand out the most to me i think they have the most value overall we have renato moicano also fighting johnny walker versus nikita krylov that's a pretty interesting fight formiga facing brandon moreno that's also pretty interesting to me as well too so is there anything else that stands out to you from this whole fight card on saturday your girl um randa marcos is also fighting yeah she doesn't like me uh, <laughs> that the, the 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 moreno fight and formiga fight is uh is interesting because that, given how things went with uh, Joe B and uh, I can't pronounce his opponent's names, but how the fight went for him, I think there's still some opportunity in the uh, in the light in the light in the excuse me I can't even talk today in the flyweight division. You know, it, they, it's on its last legs, but whoever wins this fight might be in line to get a title fight after after the after the rematch. They'll probably be the best, next best fight. That might be the last fight in the fly, flyweight division. But whoever wins this fight puts himself in line for a title shot. Or at least in position for it. 